everyone. So we're back on the mat today to do uh, happy hips yin yoga. Um, some of you guys asked me why yin yoga. So we've been doing yin yoga flows lately um, as a part of this journey of recovery. So coming back onto the mat to teach, I wanted to be able to showcase what I've been doing on my mat um, as a progression week by week on how I've been able to heal and recover and still practice at the same time. Now, weight bearing has um, poses like down dog and vinyasas and any type of poses that are like planks. I am not in a position to do that right now. Um, I'm still learning, mainly because of maybe on the knees, but maybe in the coming weeks, I'll start to show you modifications on how I've been coming back to my practice. But for now, um, a lot of my recovery yoga practice has been yin and restorative just because it helps me continue to work into the space of my body without bearing too much weight, um, compromising any strength that I'm still building on, especially within my shoulder joint. So um, welcome back if you've been watching my videos and if you're new, um, if this is unfamiliar why I'm talking about my shoulder injury, I have uh, I had a history of uh, AC joint separation um, twice already from two car accidents. So um, I've been nursing it and loving it a little bit more. I'm in physical therapy. So everything that we're doing now, it's about honoring ourselves on this mat today. So I hope you enjoy it. And we are going to begin today's practice in a tabletop pose, inviting movement. So let's go ahead and start to get into that place. So tabletop pose, I'm going to do it from the side view so you can kind of see at an angle. I'm placing my knee joints underneath my hip joints and my knees are at hip width. My wrists are underneath my shoulder joints at shoulder width. And so I'm going to come into tabletop or flat back, taking some time just to look down towards the mat. I'm going to spend a moment here just to ground by closing our eyes. And just start to feel, feel the touch of your fingertips and the heels of your palms, those knees, toes, this grounding you're into earth. Finding strength in your mind and your body. And let's take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. Two more times. Deep breath in and a deep breath out. Take another deep breath in. and a deep breath out. Beautiful. Let's start to move into the body. I'm just gonna start to see I'm arching into my low back, lifting my tailbone, opening my chest and chin forward. And then exhale, I'm gonna to start to round into cat pose, dropping my chin down to the chest, deeply rounding through my spine. And when I take my breath in, I want to lift my heart space forward. So I have to feel the compression into my low back. I'm going to slow this down one more time and then just gently go ahead and fall back, rounding your spine. Really still engage your core during this movement. So when you inhale, still draw that belly in towards the navel space and start to lift your heart space forward. And then gently release. We're going to take the next view at your own pace. So go ahead and just move with your own breath. You can go as fast as slow as your body may need. Hmm. 
starting to feel a little bit more warmed up, I like to take my practice here just to start rolling into my body. Um, this is such a great way to kind of work into those hips, work into the wrist joint, the shoulder joint, even the knees and knee joints here. And it's just a great way to begin any practice to awaken your body. Start to invite a deeper, more dynamic movement by rolling into your spine, rolling into the head. <sighs> Once that feels good, let the toes touch. Knees can still be at hip width. If you want to go a little wider, you can. But I want you to just walk the hands back. So you can start of work on, you know, easing your hip space down towards the heels first. And don't worry about opening the knees too wide to start. Um, we're going to eventually start to open the hips a little more. So just focus on kind of easing into the first child's pose. Take one last breath. And release. Let's come back onto the hands and knees. Ooh, already feeling good here. So we're gonna bring your toes back at hip width. Take a couple more rolls and we're gonna start to really open up into the hip space a little bit more. So you're going to see me transition across my mat in all ways, just so you can see it from different angles today. Now we're on our hands and knees, this is look, what it looks like from the forefront. And I want you to just very gently bend the knee, pick up the leg. So from here, you're kicking it back. So you can't see what I'm doing. Let's go ahead and start to shift my body weight this way, right? I'm just going to go from here to the knee bent and just start to circle it up. Nothing complex, just wanting you to warm up the hip joints before I start to invite those beautiful long yin poses. Ah, and then just go ahead and kick it back out and then bring it in. Okay, we're going to do that on the other side. Make sure taking your body all the way, all the way to the left knee, you're going to kick that right leg back. Mm -hmm. And then go ahead and just bend the right knee. Start to circle into that right hip. If I feel the hips open up, the cracks and the pops, saying hello. And your hips will be so happy after this. Bring that right knee down, coming back onto your tabletop. And let's begin with our first pose. So this one, we're gonna start back onto the right side. So with this one, same thing like we just did, right? We're gonna take it onto the hands and knees. Keep the knee joints underneath your hips and go ahead and pick the right leg up. I like to flex my right foot whenever I do this, so I'm activating the muscles. And now when you bend the right knee up to your chest, I want you to round your back. And I'm going to take that right foot right between your hands. If you need to scoot your right foot up, it's a good time to do that. And let's go ahead and start. So if you have blocks, you can take blocks with you. If you don't have blocks, know that there's a makeshift prop of blocks. <laughs> it's hey, we work with what we have at home, right? So hands are right underneath the shoulders. And my right heel is underneath my right knee. I want to keep that alignment no matter what. From here, I'm actually not feeling any stretch. So really depending on where you are in your body, maybe you need to pick up the left knee and walk it back a few more times until 
your left knee is behind your left calf. This way, when you bend that front knee forward, you can feel out the stretch coming into the front side of your left calf. All right, so let's go ahead and peep the right knee bent. Start to look down towards the mat. We're gonna take five deep breaths. So think of today's practice as a progression. I'm never going to ease you straight into the full expression of the posture. It's always kind of baby steps, especially with anything that requires deep opening. Um, I find that taking our body's time to do it also retrains our mind that slow and steady is sometimes better. Not to mention, you don't hurt yourself as much, right? So let's start to flex your right foot. I'm gonna to start to take my body back just to release out of that left hip. Now, perhaps in doing this and my right leg's not coming straight. So what I do is I bring my hands and blocks or bugs closer to my body. And then I start to extend my right leg, starting to really feel my hips extend toward the back of my mat. And then I ease my way down, bending my elbows, dropping my chin down to the chest. A few more breaths here. Beautiful. Step that right foot through. And from here to reverse out. Typically, we go into a down dog before the purpose of not bearing weight and reversing my way out, picking up my left knee so it's underneath my left hip, making it easier to drop my right knee back, setting my blocks out to the side. So I'm coming back for tabletop, rolling the hips, letting it feel good. And we're going to work on to the other side. So let me pivot my body. And let's go ahead and work on the other side. Knees underneath the hip joint. Take the left leg back. There you go. Beautiful. Remember, we're rounding our spine. Bend the left knee around your back first. And then take the left foot between your hands. Beautiful. There you go. Now at this point, I need my blocks. I'm going to go ahead and grab my blocks. Grab your books if you need to, whatever you need. And then alignment. My wrist is going to come underneath the shoulders. My left heel, as you can see here, is underneath my left knee. So I'm going to start to keep that alignment still. Start to find my way with my right knee, walking my right knee behind my right hip. So when I start to bend that front knee, I can feel this beautiful opening to the front side of my right hip. Now, start to bend the left knee, start to find a place of stillness, and drop your gaze down. We're going to take another five deep breaths. Okay, just about time. From here, let's go ahead and flex the left foot so you can pivot and shift your hips back. If you need some help, let's go ahead and bring the blocks, books, or your hands back a little more. And go ahead and fall back. Do you notice that I'm not dropping and sitting into my right heel? I'm really extending my energy back towards the back of your mat, towards that back wall if you have one. And this way, you're really feeling yourself elongating through the tailbone. Simultaneously, you're inhaling, reaching the chest forward. And then as you exhale, bend your elbows, round your back. 
ground down. Imagine you're carrying this left, I mean, your forehead towards that left knee. And then let's go ahead and step that left foot through. Remember, we're going to reverse. Start to walk the right foot up underneath the right knee. Pivot that left knee back, walks aside. And we're coming back to that tabletop to roll and rock it out. Perhaps the transitions are not as smooth as say a vinyasa practice on this one, but you know, when your body's injured, when your body just needs a little bit more love and tender care, sometimes it's not about the transitions, it's just the mindful movements as you're making those steps forward and adjustments. So the second one that we're gonna do here is gonna be an extension and of what we just did. So go ahead, hands underneath the shoulders, knees underneath the hips, tuck your toes in, right like that. This time work on that external rotation of your hip. Bend the right knee up towards the right tricep. Kick it back. Okay, same movement, but you're gonna step up. Bend towards the right tricep, right upper arm. Take the right foot to the outside of your right hand. Now my hands are underneath the shoulders. My right heel is underneath the right knee. My first alignment comes from my right foot. I'm gonna pivot my right toe out at a 45 degree angle, allowing my right knee to rotate towards my pinky toe to keep that external rotation. Simultaneously, I'm gonna start to walk my left knee back just enough so I can feel a good stretch. So option one, you wanna stay here. Option two, if you like to use a block or a book, you're gonna bring them in and you're gonna come down to your forearms. So you'll notice that um, our right knee is not hugging your right arm, it is actively trying to rotate away from your body. And for some of us, you can even come out to the outer edges of your right foot if you can. My left leg is still behind like this. If you'd like to see a different view, I'm gonna move myself a little bit more to the left, see more of the back of my leg. And I like to keep my left toe tucked in on this one primarily because sometimes when I untuck my toes, my heels roll out or in and it kind of messes with my hip alignment. So I keep my toes tucked so my left hip joint is still properly aligned. All right, we're gonna be here for one more minute. Remember, you still need to breathe. If you have the feels already like I do, I'm just gonna keep my breath moving, keeping my mind focused on deep breaths. If you're watching me, you probably notice I'm just rocking my hips left and right. Um, I do enjoy finding stillness, but when I practice lately, it's been while I'm in that pose, I'm also kind of exploring my body through swaying movements like this. And it actually feels good. If you'd like to stay still, you can, but you know, explore your body as it is. Okay. So we're going to slowly come back out. You can start to set your blocks aside if you need to. Hands underneath the shoulders, or we need to release. So flex the right foot very gently. Put the hands in if you need to. Fall back. 
take your time crawling back towards the back of your mat. And once that right leg is straight, when you start to extend the hips back, hands forward at shoulder width, bend your elbows. And just take a moment here just to feel the release into the hip, the low back. But just stretching it into that right hamstring. Step the right foot forward. Let's start to ease our way back to tabletop. Pick up the left knee underneath the left hip. Right knee back, roll it out. Whatever feels good. Hmm. Let's start to work on to that other side. So on this one, I'm on my hands and knees again. Tucking my toes in. Let's go ahead, left leg grab. Remember, external rotation to your left hip. Bend the left knee up towards the left tricep. Kick back. Practice that one more time, but step up to the outside of your left hand. And step. There you go. All right. Now I need my blocks, so I'm going to fall back. Take this time. Grab your blocks. Grab your books. Hands are underneath the shoulders. Now let's pay attention to that left footing. Let's rotate the left heel out, left toes out, left knee is rolling out at the same time. And once you start to ground into that, I want you to tuck the right toe in. Start to move your right knee back at your own pace. There you go. Now this time, your option one is to stay here. Continue to focus on rotating this left knee away from your body. For option two, you can join me coming down on the forearms. So notice that I'm still rocking left and right. It just feels really good. But please, by all means, you can remain still if you like. I'm going to give you about a minute of complete silence. And just listen to your breath. Calm down your mind. And let's begin. Okay, let's bring that hand back onto your block. And again, if you don't need your block, you don't need to for the second part. If you do, you can keep on it uh, or set it aside. Now I'm going to start to flex my left foot. I do this because it helps me kind of pull my hips back a little bit more, adjusting my blocks or hands as needed. I'm going to start to straighten my left leg, work on the lower body first. And then very gently start to bend my elbows and start to round into my spine. And then release. Let's go ahead and step that left foot through. And let's come back. Bring the right knee underneath the right hip, left knee back. Setting your blocks aside if you need to. And we're coming back for that tabletop pose, rolling and releasing. Okay, so let's come into 
our third hip opener. This one's gonna hit a little bit of everything here, hips. And I'm gonna do a frontal and side view, okay? So let's start with the side of view of what it looks like. Tuck into your toes. We're gonna take that right leg back. We're gonna not really do much except for slide this right knee right behind your right hand. There you go, beautiful. Now at this point, my right knee is here. My left knee is down. I want you to pick up that left knee. This way you can walk the right foot over to the left. So when you start to guide the left leg down, your right foot sits in front of that left leg. And we're leaning most of our body weight in right now. I want you to take some time to focus on your foot alignment and hip alignment. So if you have tight hips, you can keep the right foot close to your butt top. If you want to go a little deeper, you're wedging your right foot up. So when you do look at that right shin, perhaps it's parallel to the front side of your mat. If it's too much, listen to your body. Recline that right foot a little further in. Nothing wrong with that. So whatever option you take now, Focus on hip alignment. You can see that most of my body weight is sinking to my right hip. I want to bring my hands next to my hips and just enough pressing through my fingertips and lifting my hips one centimeter, one inch off the mat. And I want to roll to the left. The idea of this is to realign and square out my hips. So do this a few times. Once you start to feel good and you can find that hip alignment, you're gonna stay here. Hands come next towards the knees. Start to continue to recline from your hip space, coming down towards your forearms. And now option one, you can stay here. Option two, you can go ahead and just extend those arms to the top of your mat and just fold your body down. So whatever works better for you, you can kind of play around with your body. And just close your eyes. I'm gonna have you take five deep breaths here. That deep breath in, and that deep breath out. Okay. If this is comfortable for your body, continue to stay where you are. If you like to start to explore the depths of your body and your hips, while you're in a single pigeon pose. I've been doing this in my practice. So we can come up to the hands first. Instead of our typical way of leaning forward, I'm actually gonna pivot my upper body towards my right leg and then come back down to my arms. Now, the one thing about this is instead of starting to release my right hip and hip alignment, rolling my hips to the right, I'm gonna actively see if I can just keep rolling over to the left, feeling my chest just extend forward to my forearms. And I'm feeling a lot of this to my outer right hip. Some people feel it in their inner thighs, perhaps inner hips, really depending on just where you're tight the most. Take another deep breath in. And another deep breath out. Ooh, release. If you want to try something else new, your right hip is going to cry after this if it's anything feeling like mine. But bear with me. Take a breath. Start to walk your hands to the right. You'll notice that you're twisting into your lower back. 
And this might feel good for some people just to stay here. Maybe you want to come back down to the forearms. See how it kind of changes the stretch and the movement. You're adding up to the upper body at this point. For another three, two, one, and then coming back up. I never do those two variations too long because they go into a deeper extension, the hip space and the lower back space. So I usually do them towards the end when I know I'm preparing to rise. So let's go ahead and come back onto the hands. Tuck your left two in. I'm gonna bring my left knee underneath my left hip joint. And go ahead and slide the right leg back. So this is kind of where that rotation we came into, right? Not completely dropping the right knee. We're just gonna circle out the right leg. And then just release it down. Taking hip rolls, whatever feels good. It's a funny thing. When I first started coming back on the mat, I thought it just felt like stretching to me. I wasn't able to flow and transition as well. But um, I kind of learned that yoga is really not just you know the vinyasa aspect. It's for the flow, it's just, I mean, in my practice, it's just become more about what can I do to feel good? And as long as I'm still being mindful when I'm stretching and moving, that's all I'm really aiming for. So as much as this is called a happy hip yin yoga, you can also look at it as a feel good yoga. All right, so let's come to the other side. Our left leg is coming back. Raise that left knee up behind your left breast. Okay. And from here, I'm going to pick up my back knee, move my left foot to the right, and then glide that right leg back. There we go. Beautiful. So check on alignment if you like to. Again, from the back side, my right leg looks like this. It's fully extended. If you're having um, trouble with your right heel rolling in and out, maybe just keep that right leg tucked in. You know, this way your right heel is facing up towards the ceiling for alignment purposes. Now let's focus on that left foot, right? So your left foot should be close to the right hip if you know you have tight hip space. If you want to go further with taking that left foot up, flex your left foot if you bring it away from your hip space, protecting your left knee joint. Let's go ahead and bring hip alignment back. Square out the hips, hands next to your body. And I'm caving into my left, so I'm going to press into my fingertips, slightly lift up, and just walk. Walk a few times. And do your best to try to realign the hips all the way to the right. If you're having trouble with this, it might be a good idea to recline that left foot a little closer to your right hip. See if that helps. Once you have your hip alignment, let's start to crawl our way down. And just go ahead and look down onto the mat. If you like to close your eyes during this time, you can. If you like to add any props, you can as well. Um, since we're working with blocks, maybe use a block and just rest your forehead onto the block like this. You are more than welcome just to stay right where you are. If you like to explore the hip space and the different variations of our pigeon pose, we're going to rise back onto the hands first and continue to keep your hips squared out so you can start to walk your hands over towards that left foot. At this point, I can feel so much in my outer left hip and glute space. 
but you're more than welcome to just stay up here. If you want to just come down to the forearms, you can as well. And just remember to, instead of leaning and rounding your spine to the left, so you can start to feel yourself gliding your chest between your upper arms, rolling over towards that right hip. And if you don't know what I mean, just rock left and right within your hip space. You're going to notice when you rock forward or to the right, you're going to feel a little bit of a deeper um, stretch. We're going to do this for another three, another two, and one. Oh my goodness, I'm going to come back up. And if you want to explore the other side, maybe walk over towards that left knee. Continue to keep the hip alignment. You can start to feel that nice torso coming into a low back. You can stay here. But once again, just start to recline your chest down towards the left knee. Continue to twist and turn to the left. We're going to hold it here for three, two, and one. Ooh, rise back up. A lot of feels right now to your half space. So let's start to release. Okay. So I'm going to pivot my body. You can see how I'm coming out, tucking my right toe, lifting my right knee, moving my right knee up underneath my right hip. And I'm going to move my left leg back. <laughs> I'm still getting used to these transitions here. And well, she's coming. <laughs> We're just going to start to rotate the hips. Hi, baby. You're joining in on the mat? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to drop the left. Oh, she just did a down dog. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, okay. So let's come back onto the hands and knees. Go ahead and just roll it out. Let it feel good. You can come on and then you can join us. It's okay. Oh, and now this is the time to really open up the hips a little bit more. So. Um, don't mind mochi. Um, Momo. Yeah, thank you. We're going to start to open the knees a little wider than the hips. Let the toes touch. There you go. Again, I like to just walk my hands back so I can kind of sit my hips face down to my heels first. And then once I kind of get myself acquainted here, then I want to recline just very gently down to the forearms. Still playing with my head space, and then once that feels good, then I extend my arms and completely recline down. Just close your eyes. Start to surrender into your breath. Let the hips just ease in. Just find a moment of complete silence. Let's go ahead and just start to walk your hands over to the left side. Just making your way, drawing, drawing the hands over to the right. Let's go ahead and bring the hands back to the center. And this time, just 
kind of lift your upper body up, keep the hands and shoulder width. And, you know, there's nothing more to this except for really pushing your heels into the hands and just keep pushing your weight back to the hips. So you can really start to just sink the hips even further down to the heels. Ooh, okay, let's go ahead and bring the hands back. Drop the knees underneath the hips. Take any movement that feels good. This is the last time we're in tabletop. Okay. Start to walk the hands back towards your knees. Start to get adjusted and settled in here. Okay, hope you're feeling good. And we're gonna come down to our seated poses. Just coming into our seated pose, another pose that is a huge favor of mine when it's coming down to the hip space. It's gonna be a bound angle pose. But before I ease you into that, I know that after I do those hips series on tabletop, um, my lower back sometimes needs a little love. So if you would like to join me, we're going to bring that left hand to the right thigh. And I'm going to do this from a side angle view for cueing purposes. So left hand to the right thigh. I'm going to bring the right hand to my back of my mat. You'll notice I'm coming down onto my fingertips, primarily because I'm not really twisting it. And you know, maybe we want to round our back in this instance, and I would much rather us focus on our core and then twist. So pushing into your fingertip, I want you to kind of gently press and lift your chest forward. Notice how I went from rounded back to a straight back. Now at this point, then I use my left hand. I'm pushing into my right thigh as a momentum to slowly twist. I'm going to start to turn and look over to my right. Shoulder. I'm moving most of my breath into my belly. And then very gently, just go ahead and release, taking the hands both onto your knees. I'm going to do that on the other side. So I'm going to take that right hand, bring it onto the left knee. Nothing too deep, we're not twisting just yet. I just want you to bring the left hand to the back of your mat. Notice if you're rounding your spine, if you are, push into the left fingertip. Ready? One, two, three, and glide your chest forward, land long, long spine. From here, use your right hand, push to the outside of your left knee or left thigh. This way, as you're pushing into it, you have the momentum to twist and turn. We're going to look over to the left shoulder. Just softly bring your gaze to the wall, to the sky, whatever. As long as you're not overextending, you're feeling good. Oh, good. And then as you release, taking the knees, hands back to your knees. And let's come into our bound angle. So bound angle, we are bringing the soles of our feet together. If you have tight inner thighs, tight hips, it might be a good idea to draw the feet away from your hip space. This is a great idea just because you're creating a diamond shape. It's not fully extending too much into the muscles or just enough. If you want to go deeper, you have super flexible hips or mobility, um, thigh space. You're going to go ahead and keep the heels closer towards your pelvic bone. I'm going to grab onto the tops of our feet. Now take an inhale, lengthen your spine. You can keep the elbows close to your waist or you can open them up towards the knees, whatever your preference is. And we're going to exhale, start to hinge from your hips. Don't hinge from your belly. Uh, try to elongate. Focus on if you can keep lengthening your spine as much as you can. So from a side view, right? 
when I say hinge from your hips, sometimes people are here and they just round down and do this. I want you to focus on finding length through your low back and spine. So we're not just crouching our way down. So really lengthen through the spine. And you'll notice that my back is flat. I'm trying my best to keep lengthening and I'm not really focusing on dropping my face down to the mat yet. I'm just lengthening my way through. And the moment I know I can't come flat way down, then I drop my chin and I round my spine. There you go. I know I have a few students that sometimes look at the videos and a good way to kind of fully extend into the low back while you're opening into bound angle is this idea of complete extension of your back and extending your arms, you're gonna to start to feel your chest drop onto your feet. So if you're one of uh, my students who have a deeper practice in bound angle, I want you to just go ahead and start to recline down, still focusing on that nice flat back. And then eventually you're gonna find your chest dropping down towards your feet. And then you can start to extend your arms fully. We're going to release, rising your body up. Close your knees together. I typically like to use this time just to hug my knees, give myself a loving hug, dropping my chin down to the chest. And then release, lifting my head up. We're going to stretch your feet up towards the top of my mat, or top of your mat. And I'm going to just point your toes. Give the tops of your feet a lot, a lot of love today. And then we're going to rotate the fingertips back. So you're going to see from the frontal view that my shoulder caps are trying to rotate behind my upper back. And as I'm doing this, I'm going to start to feel kind of a curve into my low back. So it kind of looks like this. I'm pointing my toes. My fingertips are coming to the back of my neck and I'm rotating my shoulders back and I'm pushing my chest forward. This way I'm kind of compressing into the low back and I'm just gonna slow, slow, start to recline my head back. And perhaps I might change it up. See what it's like if I move my fingertips pointing in or perhaps just dropping the palms back like this. I'll go ahead and rotate more and then there you go. Now, while we're here, make sure that your hips and your feet are at the same width. I like to keep a little distance between my thighs and my legs, so I am working a little bit of the space for my belly. Um, and we're gonna come back down. So from here, adjusting your sitting bones. I'm gonna do this from a different angle. 45 degree angle, feet not to your face. Um, so from here, long spine extends up and exhale. Go ahead and start to recline down. If you have um, really tight hamstrings today, this is one of those stretches for the hamstrings and the low back. Go ahead and just micro bend your knees like I am. This will be so much easier for your low back. Also, you'll still get the stretch coming into your hamstrings and just kind of relax. You don't have to do too much. If you want to keep it active, you can grab through your feet. And in time, if you're comfortable, start to straighten out the legs. We're going to be here for about a good minute.
to relax your mind. And just calm down this body of yours. Gonna start to rise your body up. And this time we're gonna start to move a little wider to my wide like a four forward, right? We're gonna do, I like to do this, or at least in my practice lately, I've been doing it in like two to three steps. So I'm not going from this to whoop, open wide. So I like to take an interim um, opening. So what I like to do is I start with bending knees nice and wide. And since we're on the theme of, you know, open hips, um, I take Malasana or my version of Malasana seated. So I'm going to start to take my feet a little closer in, starting to walk them a little closer to my body, just to the own comforts of your own body. My back is completely rounded right now because I'm more focused here. And the idea is not to close my in knees like this, I want to open my knees out. So instead of planting my feet down like this, I'm going to start to feel myself rotating towards the outside edges of my feet. And from here, I'm going to keep flexing into my toe space. And then kind of adjust it in to my own comfort. I'm going to start to grab onto my feet just to see if I can lengthen my spine a little bit more. If you can, just do your best. Now the idea of this is Malasana pose when we're on the ground, it looks like this, right? We're in Malasana pose, we're opening our feet wide, but a lot of people can't drop like their booty and their tailbone down towards the floor like this. Um, their hips might be tight, their knees might be tight. So I love to take that variation where I'm coming on the ground like this. And all you're doing is going to lean to your arms, weight, and just open it up. So you'll notice how I'm carrying my arms inside, my palms are up. All I'm gonna do is use my arms to rotate my knees away from my body, adjusting your toes as you need to. Your toes should be at the same angle where your knees are falling in down towards. And you're just going to hold it here. Nothing more and nothing less. If you're having a lot of trouble um, because you're super tight and you're having all the feels right now, let's talk. You know, um, one of the things that, um, that helps me when I'm in my poses is to just loosen up, especially in times when I am in all the feels of the poses, if I don't want to think. Um, it's just more about like knowing that my body can do what it can do in this very given moment and doing my best and knowing that if I need to make modifications is perfectly okay. So one large reason we're not doing the full malasana today is because I can show you this modification to the traditional malasana pose. And while we're chatting here, you might start to feel more weight kind of leaning down towards your arms, towards the knees. You can start to feel it in the inner thighs and hips. And same exact stretch that you're getting from the last night. If you wanted to feel it for alignment, you can start to lengthen your spine a little bit more. And I'm feeling this all of it right now. Even though I'm not in the full malasana, I can feel that deep external rotation in my hips. Oof, and let's let it go. I'm going to stretch the legs out and just shake it out. At this point, you're starting to feel a lot into the hip space, whatever. And we're going to go a little deeper, adding into your hamstrings plus the hips with wide legged, right? So like I said, we're not doing the full wide-legged just yet. It might just be carrying your feet at the width of your mat. So you're carrying your feet at the width of your mat and spending some time just to adjust my um, tailbone and sitting bone. And then from here, elongating through my spine. 
um, from here is a nice V shape, not too wide and not too narrow. Purpose of it is I'm creating some space for my belly to kind of come between my leg space. And just at your own pace, start to adjust your hips, start to round down, kind of feel out where you are. And perhaps just today, to be passive, just drop your head down like I am. And I'm just gonna hang out here. So why like a four fold does go so deep into our hip space, our hamstrings, our low back, when you do the full expression of the posture. So as I'm kind of preparing my body to go into all that, I like to kind of just keep it a little bit more on the restorative side, not really activating my body here. I'm just keeping it pretty low key. This way my lower back can change kind of just adjust and settle into the space, giving myself some time to kind of slow down, work into my hips, my hamstrings, and above all else, letting my mind and my heart just surrender and calm down. So we have a few more breaths here. If you like to start to keep it a little bit more active, you're ready with your body, you can start to walk your hands forward just a little bit more. And once again, just drop down, relax. Three more breaths. And just roll your upper body up. A lot of forward folding there. So before we come into our full wide-legged forward fold, we're gonna have us come into a twist. So we're gonna bring that right foot in to your inner left thigh. Flex the left foot. Bring the left hand onto your right knee and right hand to the back of your mat. So we're just gonna slowly twist and turn. I just realize. So when we do any poses that requires too much of a back bend or forward fold, I like to do all the movements of what the capabilities of our um, spinal movement is. So I'm continuously bouncing it out as I'm starting to go deeper and deeper and deeper. So other side left is into your inner right thigh, right foot flexed. Take the right hand to your left knee, left hand to the back, and just once again, twist and turn to your left. And release. And for that back bend, go ahead and just cross your legs. Comfortable seated pose first. Go ahead and take the hands right behind your back. Rotate, shoulders behind your back. Come a slight view. Fingertips are pointing to the back of your mat. You're rotating the shoulders back, lifting your chest forward. And you're going to just kind of your gaze up. It's very soft. Okay, and release. Simple, simple, the spinal movements before I get you to go further and much deeper. So let's go ahead and start into a half white legged. Um, I'm gonna have you bring the left foot all the way out to the left, right foot's hugging in to closer towards um, your inner left thigh. And flex the left foot while you do this. You're gonna bring that left hand onto your right knee, rotate the right arm up, 
And you can just stay here. You don't have to drop further down. I just want you to feel the stretch coming onto the right arm, the right side of your body. And just reach over. Now, if you like to go deeper, maybe start to relax the left hand. Start to carry your left body down. And you're, I'm bending my left elbow right now. And then I'm going to reach and extend my right arm towards my left leg. Perhaps you can grab your left footing. And the idea of this is still to keep your right shoulder down like this. You can start to rotate the right shoulder up toward the ceiling, look up toward the sky. And release, we're gonna rise back up. Ooh. And then now we're gonna pivot our chest towards the left leg. And now lift the arms up and exhale, let's come back down. And release. Bring it up. So everything we're doing right now is not the yin poses or just transitional movements that um, I've been doing in between working my way into a nice quiet like a forward fold. So at this time, it's almost as if you're angling out into a wide leg, except for the fact that your right foot is in. So I take this time to actually walk my hands up towards the top of my mat. See if we can recline down in just this posture. We're going to hold it here for a few more breaths. Isn't that beautiful? We're going to carry our body up. And we're going to do the same thing to the other side. Dropping that left foot in, kicking the right leg out. And from here, when I have you, start to bring the right hand to your left knee and just extend the left arm up to the sky without compromising where your right hand's grabbing to your left knee. So you can just slow, slow, start to recline your body to the right, just enough, you can hang out here. You're not really meant to drop your entire body all the way to the right, especially if you're grabbing onto that left kneecap. But I find that starting to open up my left body doing this, I have a little bit more of a hold to one side and then this way I can kind of really pull to the other side and opposite traction to go deeper. And then if you're ready, then you go ahead and just kind of relax that right arm, bend the right elbow. And you're going to start to reach for that right foot. So this side of my body isn't as limber. So I'm just going to hang out here. So I'm going to keep focusing on really rotating my left shoulder up, lifting my gaze up. So I'm keeping my chest and heart open for another three, two, one, and ooh, release. All right, let's pivot over towards the right leg. Start to adjust your sitting bones. And then inhale, lift up. Exhale, recline. So really take your time and evaluate um, how different this practice is today. Especially if you have a practice where you're used to vinyasas and constant movements. To upkeep perhaps with a busy mind and a busy body. How does this slow down of just pose to pose? And different kinds of transition stir up 
thoughts in your mind. How is it different for you? And perhaps in the moments in our deepest stretches, how's your mind today in just quieting down? going to come back up, starting to adjust your body, and we're going to come into that kind of half way through of a wide-legged forward fold, and this is the time to really dive into yourself, right? I'm going to give you a couple nice, deep, long, deep breaths and silence, so let's go ahead, taking your time to start to recline your upper body down. I'm going to hang out here for a good couple deep breaths. Let's come back in. Ooh, another couple series of four folds. So let's go back into balancing our spine while we do this before we go into that nice, beautiful, good two to three minute um, wide legged -like four fold. So everything we kind of done kind of worked up into this very moment. So let's go ahead and rebalance our spinal movements here. So what I want you to do I'm going to show it from a side view. And you are going to actually bring your right foot in. You're going to go a lot deeper into your twist. So you're hugging that right knee up towards the chest. And you're going to take your left arm, wrap it around your right leg, and right hand to the back of your mat. Now, option one, you can stay here for a more gentle twist. If you want to go deeper, you're going to wedge this left elbow to the outside of your right then you can bring your hands up like this. You can just kind of hang it out like this, whatever you prefer. But the idea is you're pushing your outer left arm into your outer right thigh. So this way, as you're pushing and twisting, you're turning to the right. And then we're going to turn and look to my right shoulder. And let's breathe. And release. I'm going to come back in. Give yourself a nice hug. And we're going to come on to the other side. So from here, I am stretching my right leg forward, picking up my left foot in. And I'm hugging my left knee close to my chest. I'm going to wrap my right arm around my left thigh, placing my left hand to the back of my mat. Option one, stay here. Option two, we're going to wedge that right arm to the outside of your left leg. And remember, hands here, hands here, whatever you prefer. Idea is to push that outer right arm into your outer left thigh. Simultaneously, refrain from rounding your spine. Lift your chest forward, elongate your spine, and a twist turn. And we're going to hold it here for a few breaths. And release. Bring that right knee in. Go ahead and just round your spine. And we're going to start to come into a different kind of posture for your back bend. Um, this one is actually one that will bear just a tad bit of a weight. So only do a little bit to what you can. It's going to be a reverse tabletop just to kind of lift the hips up a little bit more. And so I'm going to have you come onto your hands like this. Your hands are coming behind 
your feet are grounded. Really, instead of pushing into your hands more, try to see if you can push through your heels and just lift just ever so slightly up. And then curl it up and drop back down. We're gonna do that two more times. If that really hurts your wrists, sometimes come on to your fists can help. And then just lift the hips. There you go. We're gonna do that one more time, pushing into your hands or fists, and go ahead and push in, lift, and drop back. All right. So now that we've kind of taken different kind of moves in our spine, let's go ahead and just come into our wide legged forward fold. So we're gonna take the legs nice and wide. Now, if you need to move any props, this is the time to do so. If you have a practice with a pillow or with a bolster, this might be a good time to use it. Um, so this is my bolster. You can always grab a pillow, maybe a couch cushion, whatever is available to you. Um, I just call, you know, the other props that aren't um, what we usually use, makeshift props, right? So whatever you can find. We all have pillows at home, so maybe use a pillow instead of a bolster. Stack them up. And because we're going to be here for so long, I prefer having some kind of props so I'm not just overstretching the entire duration. We are going to be here for, let's see, a good probably two minutes just to give yourself some time to unwind and release and let go. All right, so from here, keeping our feet flexed, maybe pillow all stacked up in front of you. We're just going to gently go ahead and recline our way down. And if you have a hard time kind of rounding down to the pillow because it's not high enough, you can always use blocks. You know, stack it up like this. This way you can kind of recline down. Just at a lower level, but not too low. You can turn the head to one side, relax in the arms. And Another variation I could probably do is if you have your pillow down here and you don't want to completely recline down, you just come down to the forearms like this and really focus on relaxing your body and relaxing the neck by just dropping the chin down to your chest. Taking in deep nourishing breaths through your body. And perhaps in time when we're in this posture, as the body starts to ease into the low back, your hips, your hamstrings, you can start to find your way, maybe, you know, removing a block or two, lowering the block at a lower height. If you are using blocks or perhaps books, you know, going at a lower level like this, perhaps those who aren't using blocks or books today underneath their pillow and just using a pillow, you might go ahead and find yourself moving from your forearms, moving your arms down to the side so you can come down a little lower. And if you are using your pillow, you're completely reclined down to your chest. For the last moments we have here, you might be ready just to go deeper, setting that bolster out to the side and just getting yourself ready to completely recline down to the mat as much as you can. 
So whatever works for you. We're gonna take another few breaths. Okay, and we're gonna start to rise up at this point. Like I said, nice and deep. We're gonna feel all the feels right now. So set your props completely out to the side. Bend your knees, pick up one leg, bring the other leg in. And just kind of roll your body back. Let the hands kind of chill out and just, oh, Sway your hips, sway your knees, windshield light side to side. And press your legs. Come back to center. Letting your hips, lower body rest a little bit. We're going to start to wind down this practice. Really start to ground your energy. Just be okay that we just just simple movements, stretch by stretch, pose to pose. And let yourself just be. So bring your hands to your knees. If you're looking to ground today, I want you to let the palms of your hands just rest to your knees. If you like to receive, I'm going to let the palms face up. Just close your eyes. Come back to your breath. yourself permission to be still. To quiet the mind. To surrender to your breath. And be okay. Slow down. To do us. Allow your breath to flow in. Allow your breath to flow out. Bring your hands to your knees. Just very gently begin to start rounding your back. Dropping your chin to your chest. Just stay here. Allowing every movement we take forward to slow down 
for two pulls, three pulls. Providing time in between to feel. Do nothing but just be. Taking that next breath in. With your eyes closed, just roll your chest forward, feeling your head and chin roll up towards the sky. Enough to feel your heart space open. A soft compression to your low back. The shoulders and hands are relaxed. Just neutralize your spine, coming back to a neutral back. Dropping your chin back down to your chest. Then take a breath in, roll your head to the left. Continue to breathe in, roll your head to the back. And exhale, roll forward to the right. Exhale again, dropping your chin back to your chest. Circular movements, two brief breaths in, two breaths out. So breathe in, roll up. Breathe in again, turn your head to the back. Breathe out once, pull your head to the right. Breathe out again, dropping your chin back to your chest. One last time. Breathe in, roll to the left. Breathe in again, roll to the right. Breathe out, drop your right ear to the right shoulder. Breathe out again, roll the chin back to your chest. I'm going to practice that, but in reverse. So one small breath in, roll your right ear to the right shoulder. Another second breath in, roll your head back. Breath out, drop the left ear to the left shoulder. Expel the breath of your breath out and drop your chin back to your chest. So two more times, breathe in, roll to the right. Breathe in again, roll your head back. Breathe out, roll your head to the left. And breathe out again, drop your chin down. Last one. Breathe in, roll to the right. Breathe in again, roll back. Breathe out to the left. Breathe out. Chin comes back to your chest. Just breathe. And then release, rolling your head up. Eyes are so close. Softly, without gazing at anything before us, just blink your eyes open. Softly gazing into the mat before you. Letting the body of your breath continue to calm down your mind.
and yourself are lost and calm. And have us come down to Shavasana. Taking our time here, practicing what we practice, one movement and an observation. So you can start by locating a pillow first or your bolster. You're going to bring that pillow or bolster and just put it right behind your back in the long way. So when you recline down, your entire back body just reclines down onto your back. From here, you're going to slowly start to very gently bring both feet onto the mat. Your knees are bent or hip. Arms are just resting to your knees. And once you have a moment, then you can slowly just start to recline your entire back body down towards the floor, allowing your blanket and allowing your bolster, your pillow to support your back body. A slight opening to the front side of your chest. Now you can rest your arms along the sides of your hips, palms down or palms up. You can also open your arms even wider out to the left and right. And stay here very gently to start to stretch your legs forward. Your eyes closed. And begin to turn your attention to your breath. I'm going to slowly guide you back to your body. Bring your awareness to your hands. Just move into the fingertips and your wrists. to move into your feet and your toes. And as the breath rises into your body, just stretch your arms behind your head. Continue to lengthen out your body, stretching the legs completely forward, finding length 
from fingertips to the roots of your feet. Just relax your arms, place the feet onto the mat with the knees up. Slowly roll over to your favorite side. In a world where we are in a constant movement of thought, it's okay to take it slow once a while, so we can appreciate life as it is and remember to stay present. So when you're ready, keep your eyes closed and just find your way out to a comfortable seated position, resting those hands on your knees. Say we bring our left hand to our heart. So the palm's touching your chest space. And then bring that right palm and just secure your heart's energy by bringing the right hand on top of that left hand. And we bow your head. Take a moment of silence. Speak to your heart. Say a prayer if you need to. When you're done, bring your palms together into a prayer, hands to the heart center. Life is so beautiful. In the very moments, we draw awareness inwards and take an internal stock of where we are and how we feel. May you continue to find your way back onto your mat to a sacred place where you can release and let go. With the light and love within me, I honor the light and love within each and one of you. Let us open our eyes and just lift our hands. Namaste. I hope you enjoyed our practice on the mat today. And I hope you continue to love yourself and give yourself permission slow down. A lot of things are transcending around us and sometimes 30 minutes, five minutes, an hour, one hour and a half to yourself can do so much healing for you and recovery more than you will ever know. So thank you for joining me and thank you for loving you. I will see you next time in our next session and have a good day, good week, or good night.